worship Him. We have come into this house to gather in His name to worship Christ, our Lord. Oh, worship Him, Christ. Thank you this morning for your love and your mercy, which endureth forever. 
And Lord, we thank you for being here and teaching us your way, causing us to walk in your way, keeping us, Lord. Oh, God, you kept us over the dangerous highways. Oh, God, you kept us through all the trouble that's in the land today. There's so many people that went to sleep last night but didn't wake up this morning. And we're giving you thanks. And we come before you, Lord, that you will lead us and guide us in this worship experience today. Oh, God, we come to you, and you know all our problems that we have. And you put them upon us for, your, for a reason that pleases you. But we can bear these problems against the enemy. We thank you this morning for all your goodness. Some things that we are not aware of, we give you praise. Oh, God, because you're worthy to be praised this morning. Oh, God, we come before you. We ask, oh, God, for blessings upon your people. Oh, Father, first of all, we pray that you would strengthen those that are weak. Lord, we pray that you would deliver those that are distressed or just in despair or whatever. We want you to keep us, Lord. Keep us pressing toward the mark. Keep us. Let none be lost or slack. Oh, God, in Jesus' name, let us lift up your name, oh, in honor and glory. Oh, Father God, we pray that uh, you will save some in this place. And any of us that needs to be healing, Lord, we pray that you will take care of every need, every need that some of them not spoken, some of them not known. But we pray for these things to be done because can't nobody do it like you do. Can't nobody do us like you do, Lord. We want to just give you the praise. We want to just bow down and just give you the thanks because you are worthy. You take care of our families. You take care of our enemies. Oh, God, you're just a great God, and there's none like unto you. Oh, Father God, we thank you how you have blessed us down through the years. And, Lord, we come before you that you will continue to bless us, even though it's troublous times. Oh, Father God, you are the holy comforter. And we pray that you will comfort the hearts of all of those that are a little nervous about the things that we see that are going on around here. Oh, Father God, in each and every time we can come together, we come together, oh God, for to bless your name. Today is a special day, and we pray that each and every person that will partake of this communion today will be blessed. And Lord, we pray all of these prayers to the glory and to the honor of your great name. In Jesus' name we pray. And let the church say amen. Our scripture, if you will remain standing, please, will come from 1 Corinthians, and we will begin reading from 50 through 58. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. Will it say, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in the victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I read unto you from 1 Corinthians 15, chapter the 50 through the 15th verse. May it be edified to the hearers in Jesus' name. You may be seated. To reach the masses, men of every word for an answer, Jesus gave the key. He said, If I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. How to reach the masses, men of every word 
for an answer. Jesus gave the key. He said, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, thou draw it unto me. Oh, lift him up. Oh, lift him up. Lift my Savior up. Lift the Savior up. Oh, still he sees from eternity. He said, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, Anybody love the Lord in the house today? 
Just tell somebody next to you, say, I love the Lord. And I'm not going to change my mind. I love the Lord. I'm not going to change my mind. Amen. This time, we want to worship the Lord with our tithes and with our offerings. We want to bless the Lord with a portion of what he's given to us. I want you to stand today with your best offering. Remember that we are taking pledges so that we can repair some things around here. And I also want you to uh, be reminded that you can't be God-given no matter how hard you try. Amen. Anybody love the Lord? Why are y'all looking so like you're down or something? So I can go home and say, you love me? You're like, yeah, I love you. Hallelujah. You love the person right next to you? I know you have to hug them today. Give them a hug and say, I love the Lord and love you too. Just worship him just a little bit while you have your offering in your hand. Come on, choir, help us out. because you've been good to us. You've been good in our good times and you've been good in our bad times too. We come to tell you thank you. We come to bless your holy name. We come to lift you up and to, to give you praise. We come in spite of, Lord God, all that the enemy is trying to do. We stand up in the midst of it all and we say hallelujah. We bless your name. We call upon that name that's above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue must confess Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. We honor you today, Lord. May not come with a lot may not have a million, may not have thousands, may not even have hundreds, may not have twenties or tens, but we come with what we have, 
And we come, Lord, with a cheerful heart, asking you to bless it, to multiply it, Lord God. Use it for your will and your purpose. Consider me faithful, Lord. Lodge my territory. Lodge my coast, Lord God. Lodge, Lord God, my storehouse. So that whenever you call, I can go into the storehouse. And I can bless you at all times. Oh God, not only give this gift with my hands, but I give it with my lips too. Come on, tell him thank you, Lord. Come on, give him a praise right now. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. And we want you to come by here. Somebody's waiting, Lord. Somebody need a miracle, Lord. Somebody need their body touched. Somebody need their mind fixed. Somebody need something for their children, Lord. Somebody need the devil to be driven out. He's got to go. He's got to go. In the name of Jesus, say that we command you in the name of the Lord. Oh, God, you are a rock. Bless our speaker today. Bless the word, Lord. Bless us, Lord, as we contribute to your work. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Somebody give him the highest praise. Come on, just a little bit higher. Come on, let it flow out your belly. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, ushers, deacons will direct you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. 
when you're desperate, you know he's out here. So you say, Lord, come by here. Come by here. Anybody need anything from the Lord? Tell him to come by here, Lord. Come by. Give him your address. Tell him to come by. In fact, don't wait till I get home. Come by my pew. Come by my seat. Touch me right here. Touch me right now. Heal me right here. Heal me right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. The songs. The songs of Zion. The songs of Zion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. On others, thou art calling. Don't pass me by. Come by here, Lord. Don't pass me by. If you're going to give him a miracle, give her a miracle, give them a miracle, don't, don't, don't leave me out. I want a miracle too. Anybody want a miracle? You know, the Lord is so good that you don't even have to have an altar call. The Bible says the Holy Ghost fell upon all of them that heard the word. That you can get the Holy Ghost right there in your seat. You can get touched right there in. Tell somebody, say, you can get it right here. You can get it. Yeah, right here, right here. You got to point to your seat. You can get it right here. You can get it right here. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? If the Lord just walked the house and just start touching people. Hallelujah. He'd be way over here. And I said, no, come by here, Lord. I, come by here. This, this. We haven't seen nothing yet. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither have any entered into our hearts the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Do you love him? Oh God. You watch and see what I say. There's a day coming where we're going to be listening to the word and the power it's going to fall. And folk going to be getting the Holy Ghost right next to you. And when they start getting the Holy Ghost right next to you, check yourself. Because while he's giving them the Holy Ghost, he's healing you. Check your pocketbook. Because he'll bless you right in your pocketbook. Hallelujah. Check yourself. The God I serve, he's able. Check yourself. The word. The word. They were cleansed. They were healed. By the word. Word is a light unto my pathway, is a lamp unto my feet. That word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. There is a word from the Lord. Somebody ought to be happy about that because, because the word of God says itself, he that have an ear. Anybody got it? Got a ear? Check yourself. Maybe you don't have. It. He that have a ear, a ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. It's time to put the cell phones away. You can't get a blessing through the cell phone. You have been got it. Sometimes you flip for hours. 
then you get hooked on something, then it takes you somewhere else, and you get hooked on that, and you say, I'm going to get off in a few minutes. But nobody has ever got the Holy Ghost off the cell phone. Nobody has ever got healed off the cell phone. Neither the TV. But I can show you is there a witness in the house? I don't have to show you. Is there a witness in the house that you heard a word and the Lord touched you? Hallelujah. I said, do I have a witness in the house? So if it ain't going to help you, put it away. Put it away. and Say, here I am, Lord. Any way you want to bless me. Any way you want to bless me. Any way. I wish I had some help in this. Any way you want to bless me. There's a thing they say looking for love in all the wrong places. Sometimes you're looking for your miracle. And it's in the word. But you got to go to the bathroom. You should have went to the bathroom after you gave your offering. Because you missed your miracle. Just tell somebody next to you, say, don't miss this miracle. I'm not putting the pressure on the preacher. I'm putting it on God. Touch us today. Use your man servant. Bless us. Help us. Heal us. Give us some joy. Put clapping in our hands and stomping in our feet. Bless him, Lord. In the name of Jesus. So the person who's going to bless us today, who the Lord is going to use, it's going to be none other than our pastor, Jeffrey Davis. Will you just holler out, bless him, Lord. Touch him, Lord. Use him, Lord. In Jesus' name. Before he comes, we're going to set the atmosphere where a sermonic solo from Sister Roshan Reddick. And the next voice you would hear is from the most important person most important person because he has the word. Most important person. How beautiful are the feet of those that share the gospel. None other than our pastor Jeff. In Jesus name. Amen. Come on clap your hands and give God a praise. Sister Reddy. Praise the Lord everybody. God bless you. I feel like I shouldn't even be up here. Pastor's already set the tone. But I'm just going to sing a little bit of this song. And y'all pray for me. There's a story behind my praise. That's why my hands, I'll continue to raise. I'm going to praise him for the rest of my days. There is a story behind my, my praise. There is a story behind my praise. That's why my hands, I'll continue, continue to raise. I'm going to praise him. 
God's been good to me in all of his his glory when you see me shouting don't you be amazed because I just realized how and when I got saved when you see me running. Woo. Don't you dare, don't you think it's strange because my whole life, God, He's rearranged. Yes, He did. There is, there is, there is. There is a story behind my, my praise. When you see me crying, don't try to figure it out. Oh, that's a story of how God, he's been good to me. And all of his, his glory. When you see me shouting, don't you be amazed. I had a chance to think about how and when I got saved. When you see me running. Don't you dare, don't think it's strange. My whole life, my whole life, I've seen God, he's rearranged. There is a story behind my, my praise. Oh, God, there is a story. Anybody have a story behind your praise? That's why my hands, I'll continue to raise. Oh, God, I praise you. I praise you. Oh, God, I praise you. That's why I'm going to continue. I'll continue. I'll continue. I'm going to praise him. Because there is a story behind my, my praise. There is a story ashamed of my story behind Lord I thank you for my story there is a story should have lost my mind but you stepped in you stepped in you stepped in on time God there is a story children what's supposed to be here today but God, you way, you made a way of escape. I have, I have a story. Oh, my story may not be your story, but I have a story. I have a story. I have a story. I have, I have a story. I 
I'm going to share my story. Lord, I praise you. I am the redeemer of the Lord. I have a story behind my, my praise. I have a story. Lord, I'm not ashamed of my story. But I bless you for, I bless you for my story. Lord, I thank you for the next 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 story. There is a story behind my, my praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There's a story behind my praise. Glory to God. See, there's a story behind my praise. There's a reason I act the way I act. Hallelujah. The reason I go to places I go. Praise God. There's a story. Praise God. We want to honor the Lord Jesus Christ today and we honor our pastor, Pastor Ken, and praise God to our pastor, Homer Brown, and to elder, to the elders and the people of God, and especially to our guests. Amen. We honor our first ladies. We honor you. We honor you. Praise God. God is so good to us, and he's worthy to be praised. You know, the Lord has blessed us with another avenue to share the gospel. So tell your friends, you can go back to YouTube. We're on YouTube, y'all. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. That, that's all right now. Ain't it? We're on YouTube. Our services are broadcast on Facebook and on YouTube. We're moving on up. God is blessing us. Praise God. He's elevating us, even the quality of our recordings and of our broadcasts is better. And we do it for the people in the audience. We want the gospel to reach, praise God, every, every nook, cranny, praise God. We want it to go around this world in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ because the Lord has given us something that the world need to hear. They need to hear the gospel. Praise God. Why? Why? Why do someone need to hear the gospel? Because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone. Hallelujah. Everyone that believes, they need to hear the gospel. Amen. Why, why, why all these things happening? Why are all are the prisons filled with our children? Praise God. They need to hear the gospel. The gospel is free. The gospel will set you free. Praise God. It'll set you free. Amen. It will set you free. But we do thank, amen, those who watch us and be with us on through the media. We thank God. We appreciate you. We don't take you for granted. Every like that you post and comments and even the phone calls that you give concerning what God has given us here in the Lake of Florida. Praise God. God has blessed us here. We got a little niche right here on the corner. To, uh, Martin Luther King in 8th Street. Praise God. Hallelujah. And you know what it's done? It's spreading around. Spreading around. Amen. Mother, Mother Jeffries used to sing this song. Look what God has done. He's a mastermind. A mastermind is he. He knew what he was doing. Praise God. He knew what he was doing this morning when he urged you to come and to be here at Greater Refuge today. There is a word. Praise God. I concur with our disrail. There is a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. There is a word. In 
the Gospel of St. Matthew's 15th chapter, verses 21 through 28. Who wants to take a thought? Praise God from this passage of Scripture. And the thought that we want to take is a, it's a simple thought. It's a simple phrase. Praise God, but it's full of power. In my meditation with God, seeking him, he just gave me this simple phrase, double down, double down, double down, double down. It's simple, but it's powerful. Double down. Amen. Praise God. Say it with me. Double down. Amen. Praise God. In this 15th chapter of St. Matthew's, beginning at verse 21, it reads, Then Jesus went thence and departed in the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same, same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with devil with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. But he answered and said, I'm not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Praise God. But he answered and said, It's not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, Great is thy faith, being unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. And again, my thought today is to double down. To double down is to strengthen one's commitment to a particular strategy or course of action. Typically, typically one that is potentially risky. It's to increase one's effort or hold to a position or opinion, especially when it's vulnerable or taking a risk. To double down is to become more zealous, tenacious, or resolute in a position or in undertaking to double down is to put forth the extra effort, the extra commitment, praise God, that one need. That 21st verse, and it's important that we look at this narrative here. It said, then Jesus went dense and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. Sidon was named after Noah's grandsons of Canaan's son. Praise God, his firstborn son. And it was Zidon. Praise God, they changed it from Zidon to Sidon. And Zidon, it was a part of the promised land that was given to Asia. Praise God. When Joshua was conquering. Amen the promised land for the people of Israel. But according to Judges, that first chapter, the third, first verse, the Lord had told them to drive them out. But that third first verse, it says that Asher didn't drive Zidon and others out of their land. He let them stay there, praise God. They were fighters. They were committed. Praise God. Even the Babylonians, when they took them captive, they couldn't fully do it. Praise God. They couldn't, they couldn't defeat them. 
They it was just they couldn't do it. Finally, praise God. God will bless even those who don't deserve a blessing. And so at Matthew, that 22nd verse said, And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of that same coast. Praise God. And Mark, according to Mark's gospel, this woman says she was a Greek. And she was a Syrophoenician by nature, by nation. Praise God. And according to Barnes' notes of the New Testament, the five South Phoenicians were descendants of the Canaanites. The country includes Tyre and Sidon. And it's called Paraphonesia or South of Paraphonesia. This country was taken by the Greeks under Alexander the Great. And this was, they were conquered about 300 years before Christ, praise God, B.C. And this city, praise God, when Christ was here, it wasn't part of Israel. It was a Greek city. And that's why she was, he was a Greek. See, this woman of Canaan, this woman for, from a far country, this woman had, who had different cultures. As a matter of fact, Tara Jezebel was uh, the daughter of the king, of a king of that area. area. And this king, praise God, this country, they worship Baal. In 18, I believe it was 1855, there was a the the conference of the king, and they had inscriptions about Baal worship. And this was found in 1855. They didn't believe in God. They believed in idol gods. Had many other gods besides the Lord Jesus Christ. But this woman, she found she heard about the Lord Jesus. And she had something on her mind. This woman, she cried out to him. She was zealous. She was intense. She was emotional. She was compelling to God. She said, have mercy on me. Oh, Lord. Praise God. Uh, her Lord wasn't our God as a nation. As a nation, they held on to their customs, worshiping other gods. Praise God. But when you need a mechanic, you don't go to the dentist. Hallelujah to God. And when you need a dentist, you don't go to the mechanic. Praise God. There have been people around in this, in this community. They talked down on Pentecost, talked down on the, the apostolic church, the sanctified church. But when that cancer came, <laughs> when that diabetes came, it was a change. Hallelujah to God. They came looking, praying, pray for me. Amen. Because when you need something, you go to the person who can do and help you in the things that you need. This woman cried out to the Lord, have mercy upon me. And she understood even more than Israel. Israel didn't want to accept the Lord as the Messiah. Have mercy on me, Lord, Messiah, that son of David. Praise God. Israel wanted to say that he was from the devil, that his works weren't good. But sometimes, praise God, it don't matter what people say, not when it counts, not when you need help. She cried out to the Lord, have mercy on me. And you got to understand sometimes, praise God, with your children. Hallelujah to God. David, praise God, when his son was killed. His rebellious son. He cried out, asking them, asking them, man, I wouldn't have been me. You won't, you rather take the pain than your children. But parents have heard say, praise God, it's not, it, it just don't suppose to work like this, that the parent 
bury their child. Hallelujah. And we will change places sometimes for our children. And this woman wasn't saying, have mercy on my child. But have mercy on me because I'm feeling what she feels. Hallelujah. Have you ever felt that pain? Have mercy on me, oh God. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. Oh, it grieves me to see, see my daughter the way she is. And saying, but he answered her, not a word. Didn't say anything. Didn't answer her. This woman, praise God, at this point, the average person would say, well, forget you. Forget you. But she had something on her mind. She knew that the Lord was able to do it. She heard about the miracles. She heard about them, praise God. He didn't say anything, didn't know his disciples. He said that his disciples came and saw him saying, send her away for she cried after us. Scripture, nowhere in the scripture that is recorded. And she said, Jesus, John, Peter, my daughter. They, they weren't even in the picture. But they said, send her away. Send her away, praise God. Praise God, but you got to understand, there's a reason. Sometimes you mean right, but you don't do right. According to Mark's gospel, the narrative was that from this, he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon. And we have no man know it. The Lord was went to a foreign country, away from Israel, to get some rest. He wanted some peace, some relaxation. He went there that no man know it. When the Lord went, praise God, sometimes we think that nowhere on the ground. Maybe a little vacation, a little R&R, &R, praise God, but it say, but he could not be hid. And so if you take that in mind, you can understand their, the disciples, how they felt, what they was doing. It wasn't just being mean to the Lord. They were watching out for the Savior. Send her away, Lord. We come here for you to rest. We come here for it so you can relax. Send her away. Send her away. Get rid of her. Because she need to rest. And sometimes we do things like that. We're going to take care of the man of God more than God can take care of the man of God. We've mentioned in Sunday school uh, 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 about, amen, uh, our pastor, uh, Groover. He had that sciatica, his nerve, it was painful. And I, I could, in the bank, you can see the pain, him having a hard time getting up, getting around. He was in much pain, and his shoulder was bad, and he just was bad. And I, and I said to him, Pastor Bishop, uh, you, you ain't got to come. We'll take care of it. Look it out for him, not trying to take over, not a coup. But looking out for our pastor. Bishop, we'll, you, you take care of yourself. And when Bishop got through with me, that was the last time I, I didn't say that no more. If he had come in the wheelchair, praise the Lord, Bishop, good to see you. Because it, you can't do more than God can do. The Lord had the charge. He had to hear this woman. Praise God. He couldn't be here. And after that, amen, he finally said something. Back to St. Matthew's, that 15th chapter. He said, but he answered her and said, I'm not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In other words, woman, it's not your time yet. I, I got a mission. And I didn't come here to... to Take care of my mission. I came here for a break. Praise God. But what she did, she worshiped him. She was tenacious. This woman was persistent. 
She was seeking God for what she needed. She desired the Lord to help us daughter. And so instead of getting mad, her strategy was to worship. Average person prays to God, well, if you don't want to help, you ain't got to help. Any neck popping people in the house? Give them a piece of your mind. I knew you weren't going to do it anyway. But he, no, that's not what this woman wanted. She wanted help from the Lord. What this woman did, she doubled down. Amen. She went the extra way. Lord, help me. You might not be here for me, but help me. I, I need your help. <laughs> I need your help. Hallelujah. I need your help. But that wasn't enough. Praise God. God still had to think about his mission. He said, but he answered and said, it's not me. It's not right. To taste the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And he was right for the time. Mark said it like this, let the children first be filled. For it's not meat to take the children bread and cast it unto the dogs. You got to understand what the Lord came. Amen. Uh, St. John, that first chapter, he came unto his own. And they received him not. But he had to come to his own first. He had to give them the opportunity. The children bread at that time was for the children of Israel. And it wasn't right to take the children of Israel's blessing and cast it to the dogs. When John was in prison, according to St. Matthew's 11 chapter, it said when John was in prison, he heard about the words of Christ. And he sent his disciples to him and to ask them and say, Art thou the one? Or should we be looking for another? Are you the Messiah? Are you the one that come to save Israel, to deliver Israel? Or should we be looking for another? Now, the Lord didn't answer, yes, I'm the one. I'm the one. I was virgin, virgin birth, and I was conceived of the Holy Ghost. But the prophecies that went out about the children's bread, praise God. And so what the Lord said to him, he said, praise God, go and show John those things which you have, have seen or the things that you heard. And he said, tell them that the blind, that's children's bread, received their sight. The lame, the children bread, y'all. They walk. Amen. The leper, they were cleansed. The children bread. It was for Israel. The Lord came to heal them. Praise God. In Isaiah prophesied, the spirit of the Lord was upon me. He has anointed me. <laughs> he has anointed me to go to Israel to help them. Praise God. Said the deaf they hear and the dead they're raised up. And the poor of the gospel was preached to them. That was his purpose. That was his reason. He came to his own, to Israel. But they wouldn't receive him. Hallelujah. But the Lord was focused on his mission. Often he said, this must be done that the scripture would be fulfilled. The scripture had to be fulfilled. Hallelujah to God. God had a purpose. He wouldn't alter the scripture to, to do any other thing. He had his focus even when he went to the cross. Hallelujah to God. He didn't want to do it as a man, but he was on a mission. He was anointed. Hallelujah. He was anointed for this reason. 
Oh, I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But this woman says unto him, say, true. You're right. I accept that, Lord. Uh, you, you tell the truth. You, you, you got it right. Praise God. Praise God. But you got to understand, this woman was a Greek. And Greeks were intellectual. They, they, they studied. They did philosophies. She had a comeback. Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to have a comeback. Hallelujah. You got to have some kind of wit. Hallelujah. She could have just said, oh, what, what, what. Oh, but no, she said, yes, true. True, Lord. Yet the dogs eat the crumbs. <laughs> that falls in front of the master's table. She was resolute. She was determined. She appeared to her purpose. This woman was steadfast. Sometimes no is just not an answer. It's not an option. You got to be steadfast, unmovable. Whatever it takes, Lord, do it. If I have to eat some crumbs from the master's table, just give me some crumbs. If crumbs will do it, give me some crumbs. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. And the Lord looked at this woman. He looked at her and answered her and said unto her, O woman, Great is your faith. Great is your faith. Faith. Praise God and say, whatever you want, whatever you want, you can have it because of your faith. Your faith works miracles. Hallelujah. It's not necessarily the, the pastor. Praise God. Your faith. Your faith is what's going to set you free. Your faith is what's going to take you up higher. Your faith, hallelujah to God, is what's going to make God work in your life the way that God should work in your life. Hallelujah. You can't have that faith. And it's good. God gave us the man of God. And God gave us the word. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Praise God. But they can lay hands on all you want. If you don't believe. Hallelujah. They just, they just. Passing one germ from you to them and your germs to them and their germs to you. You got to have faith. You got to believe God. Hallelujah. Say from that same hour, this woman was healed. James put it like this, but let him that ask in faith, ask in faith, not wavering. Not changing their mind. But he that wavered. He said it's like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For that not that man that thinks that he shall receive anything of God. Because a double-minded person. He's a stable, unstable in all his ways. You got to want it. Praise God. That's what tearing is. Praise God. You don't have to tear it for the Holy Ghost. But what tearing does is prepare you to receive it. Calling on the name of the Lord. You say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then something happened on the inside. And you begin to believe God. And then if you have a good altar worker, they'll, they'll Take up to another level. Just believe God. And something happened to you, you start believing it. Hallelujah to God. Then some will say, well, call them like you want it. Hallelujah. And then they change your mind. They change your thoughts. And I really want it, praise God. So I'm going to say it a little harder. You can't force a person. I'm calling, 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 calling. You got to bring them to that point. You got to lead them to that point. You got to guide them to that point. You can't force it, praise God. They say you can take the horse to the water, but you can't make them drink. They got to have a desire to drink. They say, well, just taste and see that the, the Lord is good. And when you call him enough, you might not get the whole.
Holy Ghost right then. But he'll touch you. Hallelujah to God. He'll touch you. He'll touch you. You feel him on you. Hallelujah. But you got to believe it. And when he touch you, praise God, it'll take you a little higher. It'll take you a little higher. Hallelujah. It'll take you to a little higher in God. Then they say, well, just believe in me. They know that you're there. They know that God is working in you. They know that God is moving in you. They can tell that perhaps you're in cloven tongues. You're out of yourself. Then they say, well, just believe him. Believe him, dear. Believe him, dear. Hallelujah, you just start believing him. Then there's another level. They say, well, didn't receive it. Hallelujah, you got to receive it. You got to receive it. Lord, I want it. Here I am, Lord. Do it for me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. You're not wasting your time. You're not wasting your time. Hallelujah tells us without faith, it's impossible. Ain't no way that you can please God without faith. It's impossible. It's impossible to please God without faith. Because if you want to go to God, you got to believe God. If you go to God and not believe in God, nothing's going to happen. Times I went to the hospital and, and out of courtesy, the saints in the, in the room and going to pray for someone that believe God, sisters and brothers. Praise God and ask the roommate a neighbor, I guess roommate, I would guess it would be a roommate. Say, do, do you want do you want some prayer also? You want me to pray for you? You know, sometimes they say uh, prayer don't hurt nobody. <laughs> That's a sign. They don't want that prayer. They they're just they're just saying something. If they wanted that prayer, Pastor, sir, come pray for me. If you don't want it, you're not going to get it. But if you want it, it's yours for the taking. Say, they that come to God must believe that he is. Hallelujah. This woman started out, oh, Lord. Praise God. She wouldn't pray for Bell. Oh, Lord. And there was something in that son of David. Praise God. Matthew wanted us to understand that he was the son of David. He was the one that was prophesied that was going to come from the lawns of David and save his people. And this woman called hold to it. Thou son of David. Thou Messiah. My Lord. Thy God. Thy Savior. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. You got to go in the right way. I know who you are. You're better than them. Perhaps you heard about the stories of, uh, with the prophet, praise God, uh, Elijah. Maybe it had fought, come down all the gods of Baal and how God worked. Praise God, it was something somewhere was planted in this woman's mind. That I can be him. That I can get to God. That if I can worship God, God will move in my life. Not if I complain to God. And it's not necessary just in the begging to God. There's a place for begging. This woman cried out to God. Anybody ever had to cry out to God for God? Anybody ever had to cry? Anybody had to praise God to, amen, forget your pride. Amen, forget your protocol. Amen, forget yourself and cry out to the Lord. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. I need your help. <laughs> Ever had one of those moments? Praise God, I remember. And, and, and really... 
my mostly cry out moments wasn't for myself. It was for someone else. Praise God. I guess I don't, I don't know. I better not say that because, well, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it because I don't believe God going to put something on me that I can't bear. I, I, I want to be open. Praise God. Maybe I was too macho. Amen. To have that kind of cry out moment. But with my, my wife, praise God, when she was in that labor, delivery room, forcing, trying to help my son, that thing I caused. What we caused. <laughs> she was there, and she was laboring, and nothing would happen. And I saw the sweat and the tears on, on, and on, on her eyes, and I saw that look in her face. Like, I'm about to give up. I can't, I can't do this. And the doctor looked at me. And that feeling of surrender was in his eyes. Praise God. And I, and I, I was in a position. Rolling her head wouldn't help her. Say, push, push. Nothing would happen. Praise God, but what I did, I saw a chair over there in the corner. And I went and got in that chair. And I sat down in that chair. And I put my head in my hands and put it on my knees. And I began to cry out to God. Lord, help us. I need your help, Jesus. And I'm telling you, it wasn't two minutes. Hallelujah to God. We heard some crying. God moved. He moved. I cried and he heard my cry. And he delivered my son. He delivered him. Another case, Jennifer. With big old Shaquille. She was laboring. They called me late. My daughter, I was kind of upset. Y'all just called to me. And I got to the hospital. And she was in so much pain, laboring with her first child. Didn't know what to expect. And she said, and I walked in. And she looked at me. The first thing and the only thing she said, Daddy, pray. Daddy, pray. And I began to call out to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, I was serious. This is my baby. But she ain't my baby. But she's my baby. She's my child. She's in pain. Hallelujah. You know what God did? Hallelujah. Maybe 30 seconds. That boy, that man, your man. He was a boy then. Came on out. I said, you got to believe God. You got to believe God. If you can believe God, all things are possible to them that believe. Can you believe God for your miracle? Do you have a miracle that you really, really, really need? Is that something that you really, really want God to do? Is there something that you're not going to accept no for an answer? That I'm going to believe God. Is there any Joes in the house? All the time of my appointed time. All of my time that is appointed to me to go through this. I'm going to wait. Because my change is coming. God didn't promise this for me. This is not my destiny. This is just a road. This is just an avenue to what God wants for me. What God wants for me. Hallelujah. What God wants for me. Hallelujah. This ain't it. This don't even resemble what God has for me. But I believe God. I believe God that he's going to take care of me. 
I believe that's why I can brag on him. That's why I can depend on him. Because I believe God. And he'll never leave me. Do you believe he won't never leave you? That doesn't mean that things aren't going to happen. There's been hardships. There's been failures. There's been disappointments. But he's never left me. Hallelujah. Somewhere, some way, he gave me a little hand of comfort. A little word of comfort. How does he somehow, somehow, he'll just touch and soothe my soul. You're okay. I was down, down. I told the story many a times, probably too many times. And I didn't want to come out the office. It was like I was forcing myself to come out the office to face the people. Didn't feel it. I didn't feel it. And hadn't felt it for a while. Looked like the opposition was against me. But praise God, I walked out the building and before I, out the room rather, and before I get up the stairs, there's a small voice spoke to me. Don't I take good care of you? Don't I take good care of you? And all I could say was, yes, that was enough. Hallelujah. And I had that moment. Not again. That was done. That test is over. Hallelujah. That trial is over. That journey is over. Don't I take good care of you? Hallelujah. Do he take good care of you? Do he provide for you? Do he make a way for you? Do he open doors for you? Hallelujah to God. But why? Why? Why should we be that way? Because sometimes we just can't see. Sometimes we don't see what God is doing. We don't see his hands in our life. We've been talking to Elder, and I went to his house the other day to correct him, Elder Welch, to encourage him, to chastise him. Sit down somewhere. <laughs> That's all right, cuz, ain't it? <laughs> and we can begin to talk. Praise God, because I'm looking. And then I sent the man and had a stroke. Amen. Outside where he shouldn't have been. What we say. That's what you say, Paul. <laughs> doing what he shouldn't have been doing. Praise God. And then walked around three weeks, bleeding on the brain. Praise God. But God was merciful. And so they take the stitches out. Something with that three. Three weeks. Praise God. They took the stitches out, the staples out of his head. Three days later, a freak accident happened. A squirrel. Anybody ever heard of a squirrel falling out, your, out of a tree on your head? That your head is the bullseye. Squirrel fell out and there you are. There he is. Bleeding again. Another stroke. That's what a stroke is. Bleeding from the brain. Praise God. And hallelujah. He still walked around. Wouldn't even tell nobody. Hallelujah. For a while. I don't know. How, remember how on the second time. Praise God. And had to go through this process again. And they have trouble stopping the bleed. And so, so send me a, a video. Elder, somebody went and got a bicycle. We trying to get him to sit down. Got him a three-wheeler. And he's strolling down the street on the three <laughs> Man, what's wrong with you? <laughs> what's wrong with you? Have you lost it? Did, did that squirrel unscrew some screws? What's wrong with you? So we're gonna we're gonna get him back on track. Get him right. So I went, we talking. Praise God and hallelujah. He got me on track. Wasn't me, 
But he was a matter of fact. I'm in God's hand. God's going to take care of me. And, and, and if I, I'm going to go one day, but I'm in, I'm in God's hand. And then when I thought about it, walking around three weeks with a stroke, that's supernatural. That ain't ordinary. <laughs> Praise God. Let's, I want to show you something else, James. Hallelujah. I'm going to let, out of all these trees in this yard, I'm going to let that squirrel play with somebody, with another squirrel and miss them and hit you on your head. Hallelujah. And I'm going to let you go through it again. And when I let you go through it again, I'm going to still show you. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm going to show you that I am God. I'm going to show you I'm a miracle worker. Hallelujah. I'm going to show you. And so we're begging them, use the, use the cane. Use the cane, daddy. Use the cane. They gave you the cane for a reason. And I'm not saying you shouldn't. You should. Praise God. But the bottom line is this. What'd you say? You heard what she said? Why are you doing that, Elder? Why are you acting like that? You trust God? And if God got you, <laughs> if God is with you, if God is with you, who can be against you? Who can stand against you? The devil and his angels can't stand against you when God is with you. If he's going to do something to you, he has to get permission. And God's not going to let me or you. He's not going to let nothing come on us that we can't bear with every trial, with every temptation, with all of it. He's going to give us a way of an escape. He's going to give us a way of escape. I know we forgot that song. I understand we don't sing it anymore. Hallelujah. That was a time of the past when we had to, amen, rely on commodity. When we had to get the bacon. I mean the cheese. When we had to get the potted eggs and that good old peanut butter. We had to, God had to make a way that way. But he don't have to do that no more. And so we don't sing some of the songs we used to sing. Hallelujah. We used to sing the, the Lord will make a way somehow. I know the Lord is going to make a way Somehow, now we can go to Wells Fargo, Bank of America, when they wouldn't give us nothing, when they wouldn't finance our homes. We had to sing that song. The Lord will make a way. Somehow. But now we can, lots of us, most of us, can sign the dotted line and we forget that. The Lord will make a way. Even now, he'll make a way. Even now, he'll open doors. Even now, he'll deliver. Even now, he'll set free. Even now, he'll deliver my child. Even now, he'll heal my body. Even now, Got good insurance. Primary care. Don't cost a dime. Can go to him. Praise God anytime. Let's go and show up. Make a phone call. But I say even now. With the Medicare. The Medicaid. Who matter? Praise God. All these other things. It's God. It's God. Hallelujah. We, we had in Sunday school the limitations of Jeremiah. How Jeremiah was feeling bad. Didn't want to preach. Didn't want to bother with those people. But when he looked back in his mind, sometimes we got to go back into our mind. 
Sometimes we need to remember some stuff. We got to remember some time when I, when I didn't have what I got. See, I can remember. I can remember opening the, the freezer and one, maybe two little small unclean fish. That's all we had in the freezer. And I had a little money. And I had to decide whether or not to take that little money and Maybe right then we could have went to McDonald's and won a lot of money. Take that money and buy some food. A goal, fulfill the mission that God had given to me. To go and do what God put in my heart to do. Go and take care of the assignment that I had at that time. So what I did, I put that little money in in gas in my car, in the van. And I went to do God's business. I went, praise God, not knowing what was going to happen. Amen, that afternoon. Maybe I could have, we could have went to Mama. And Mama, praise God, if she had it, she'll give it. Maybe, praise God, hallelujah to God, could have went and got some oranges out of somebody's orange grove. But that wasn't mine. But I went and did the work of God. Now mind me, y'all, didn't have a lot of gas. But and, and the church was in Largo. And mother, she asked me to take her home in Clearwater. That's out of the way, mother. That was a test. That's out of the way. But I took her home. Then she said, come in the house, come in the house. I got something I want to show you. And she showed me this old Bible. This old Bible. And, and, and I looked at it. Then she said to me, wait a minute. I got all this food that I can't do nothing with. Back then they had the uh, uh, organization called the Neighborhood Service Center, which took care of the elderly. And this woman, this lady, this mother, by the unction of the Holy Ghost. I, I didn't go there, amen, but the poor mouth. Hallelujah, when my lips wasn't gray. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. But somehow God put in that lady's heart. Hallelujah, I want you to look out for my servant. And she began to, amen, I mean, tell the, the back of the van and I tell you no lie and I'm not embellishing a little bit the back of my van blown astro van had quite a few quite a bit of room am I telling the truth hallelujah to God and she, she, she had grocery bags of food I mean you talking about loaded up I mean, it wasn't hardly no room to close the door. If she would have went a little higher, it would have obstructed my view from seeing in the rear view mirror. And then I would have been illegal then. God, they didn't even work that out. Because with my limitations on my driver's license, I have to have a, a rear view mirror. I got to be able to look through the rear view mirror and see what's behind me to compensate with what one of my eyes couldn't do. And if I had gotten in a wreck and couldn't look in the real room mirror, I, I would have been at fault. But God even looked out for that. I say, won't he do it, saints? Have you ever been in a position that God had to do it? How that you couldn't do it yourself? You're squeezing, you're doing what you can. You, you came to the end, but you cried out to God. And sometimes you don't even have to cry out to God. Sometimes God challenges you. He challenges you. Just like in Malachi. Hallelujah, that third chapter. Bring your tithe and offering to the storehouse. You bring it to, my, to, to the storehouse. Say that there'll be food in my house. 
And this is the only place in the scripture that I know of. And scholars say it too, but I'm not a scholar. I'm going by what they say. Say this is the only place in the scripture that God challenges us. Try me. You bring your tithe and your offering into the storehouse. You do it, hallelujah. And you try me. You try me. You try you you can bet on that. You it's a it's a it's a deal that won't go sour. Won't go south. Try me. See won't I open up the wonders of heaven. See won't I do it. See won't I pour out blessings. See won't I do more than you can receive. See won't I do it. Try me. Sometimes you gotta try him. Hallelujah. He tried me. Hallelujah. In my early days, how do you get all this, Elder? Uh, Try me. The Lord told me when we was building this church, Bishop had, I believe it was for the steel. It was, uh, steel was as expensive. And we need to raise money because we built this church, praise God, as we got the money. We didn't go down to Wells Fargo. Hallelujah to God. We did this. Pies, scrapers, <laughs> fried fish, dinners on Sunday, working hard with our hands. Hallelujah. So Bishop put out that call. The Spirit spoke to me. Give him your check. What? Well, now, Lord, you know I ain't got but maybe $50 in the bank, 25 and so they don't close my account. What? Give him, give him your check. My whole check was 300 and I think $350 and some cents, or 49 It was 300 over $300. Didn't have nothing to fall back on. And I gave my check. I wrote it, and I put it in the basket. God will try you sometime. He'll try you. <laughs> and then have the, what I got now. See, now, <laughs> if, if Wells Fargo don't have it, if that account low, I can go to Mid Florida. If that account low, I, I can go to Publish Credit Union. And if that account run low, I can go to Bank of Charlotte. <laughs> but by then, Mama didn't have it. I had to depend on God. And you know what he did? I found out something about God that week. I didn't run out of gas. I didn't miss my car payment. Praise God, and I didn't go hungry. Somehow God made it that I, that I made it through the week to the next paycheck. Didn't have to ask nobody for a dime. <laughs> Won't he do it? Won't he do it? This woman cried out to God. She wasn't the most deserving person. And today I'm not the most deserving person. Would have never been nominated. Ain't I'm right, Eddie Jean? What about you, Gloria? You would have nominated me for the most likely to succeed. Don't say nothing. You be <laughs> that's, same, that's that same job. But God. But God. She cried out to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Anybody need God's mercy today? 
<laughs> you got to cry. Let him know. Let him know. Sometimes our pride don't let us cry out. Hallelujah. We heard that song, you know, a man ain't supposed to cry. Huh? <laughs> That's what they told us. See. Suck it up. Man up. But there come a time. Some things will make you cry. <laughs> and when you cry, you're releasing. A cry, praise the Lord, is a sign of surrender. A cry that you know I don't know what to do, how to do it. I'm at my wits end. I, I, I tried, I went, I did, but it didn't help. But you got to cry to the right person. He tells us that he saved our tears. Huh? He know them tears. He know those tears you had 20 years ago. Hallelujah. Oh, we're going we gonna to bless the Lord. We're going to bless the Lord. We're going to bless the Lord. Because he's good. Who would have thought? Hallelujah. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? God, I praise you. Who would have thought? Not just me. <laughs> Who would have thought that you would be in the seat that you're in? That you'll be receiving the blessings that you are receiving? That God would be so merciful. You know. You know what you did. You know where you were. You know that you were there. You know you should have been in prison. You know it. Hallelujah. You know you should have been there. Hallelujah. You know it. You know it. But the mercies of God. The mercies of God. I'm done, but let me tell you this. And, and I told a story in this lady's face. Praise God. This 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 lady, praise God, Hispanic lady. And oh, that doesn't matter, but praise God. The Lord blessed her to come into the church. Hallelujah. And her motives wasn't all that good, praise God. Her motives weren't good. I was her judge. But the bird had already told me. How do you get a bird? You never know, had a bird speak in your ear? She wants you. She, she wants to get you. She wants you. But I got her into the church. And she came down that aisle. We laid hands on her and prayed for her. She told Toya, I'm going to get him. And she would flirt, flirt. You talking about a flirt, 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 flirt. My job, my job. She still called me her job. And, 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 and we prayed for her. And God gave her the Holy Ghost in the prayer line. <laughs> Laying hands on her. God gave her the Holy Ghost. Ain't seen well, I can't say she hadn't seen. Had not only they touched the altar, God gave her the Holy Ghost. God gave her the Holy Ghost. And what God did, merciful Savior, merciful Savior. She was so jealous, zealous. So that that personality that she had, she turned it over to God, and God was using her. Then she had a, a, a fall. She had this fall, praise God. She went back into the world. But I'm telling you how God is so merciful. And she was went back to Hector. And I told her, I said, I, I believe you. I do. I believe you love God. But you love Hector more. Broke her heart. Broke her heart. She just saw that look on her face. 
condemned it. I didn't mean to, but that's what God gave me. I believe we love God. And some of us, we love God. But we love something else more. And so God had to move. God had to do something. God had to fix that situation. And they were going down Highway 60 near Turkey Creek, her and Hector. Praise God and the Fed had their eye on Hector. He was a pretty big time drug dealer, Hector was. Praise God. So the, the, the feds pulled them on Highway 60. Praise God. And you know what the, they told this daughter of Zion? See, I know you're not involved. You can go. And let her walk down the street. Leave this walk. You just go. Thank you, Jesus. And so what the Lord did for Hector, the Lord put Hector in federal prison a long way off from Florida. Put it out of her reach. Put it out of her reach. And then after he served his time, they deported Hector. What must God do to make us do right? What must God do to make us love him the way we should love him? Huh? What must he do? What's going to take? What is it going to take for us to surrender to God? Would y'all help me sing this song? I mean, let me change that. Drop me here. I am thine, O oh Lord. I've heard your cry. To be closer drawn to me. Alright, what's next? Good day. Come on, cry. Everyone, congregation, help us. I am done.
feel that way? Do you want to be near? Do you want to be near? Draw me near, Lord. Don't let me go. The power blesses with our communion song as we prepare for our holy communion.
as we prepare to partake in the Lord's Supper. Father God, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord, we ask that you would bless this wine, Lord, as we are drinking it in representation of your blood, that you would bless this bread for your body, which is broken for us. Father, we ask that you would cleanse and clear every heart. For you told us if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Lord, we ask that you would remove and forgive us of every sin, every trespass. Oh God, if we have harmed anyone, have done anything, I've had a thought that's not like you. Wash us now. In thy precious blood, cleanse us, Lord God, that we may have come in union, that we may be one with you on this day and one with one another. Bless this table. Bless those who eat with us and drink with us and celebrate your death until you come again. We thank you now. We bless you now, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is one of the, is the most sacred moment that God wanted for his church. It's only two ordinances that God has of the New Testament church. That is baptism and Holy Communion. We come here today to eat of his body, drink of his blood. The weight weight of this little cracker, this little piece of bread in our lives, the significance of this in the life of the saint, the privilege to come together drink of his blood and eat of his body. The Bible tells us on the same night that the Lord was betrayed, he took bread. After he blessed it, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. And he told them, take ye. This is my body which broke, was broken for you. And I want you to do this in remembrance of me. Ah, it is. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my Father, my God, my Savior, I love you, Jesus. When he was on that cross, they pierced him in his side. Still wouldn't come down. So out of his side came blood and water. But you, my children, you don't have to go through the same thing. I'm not asking for you to be pierced in your side. I'm not asking you to be whipped with many stripes. All I want you to do is to remember what I did for you. Then he told his disciples, this is a cup of the New Testament in my blood. It's in my blood. 
this cup is in my blood. Uh, my blood. So I'm drinking all of it. And as often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you do, do show forth the Lord's death until he's come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.